HQ presented by Geico. Oh, we're jamming out here. Very well, jazzy. That is jazzy. Yeah, that, I don't know if Sean Calipari is going to say, like, this is jazzy music yeah, Maybe you could, put, like, uh, you could put yakety sax <laughs> to uh, what he's done in Kentucky the last five years or so. Uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good, man, he started off like a house of fire there. They won the 2012 National Championship, four Final Four appearances. But they haven't made a Final Four in almost 10 years, and they haven't made a Sweet 16 since 2019. Four straight Sweet 16s missed. Just the second time that's happened at Kentucky. Let's bring in Matt Norlander here on a big day for Coach Cal as he meets with the university. Tell us about that meeting and what you expect to come out of it. Well, it's important to understand the context of what's on the table here, as I understand it from a source. Is the, you know, There's been so much speculation and an uproar from fans about Kentucky and Calipari, and they should move on. Uh, but Mitch Barnhart, the athletic director of Kentucky, plans to meet with John Calipari on Tuesday afternoon. And the intent of that meeting is to kind of level set and say, OK, if we're moving forward here, what is going to change? Because there has to be things that change. It would, it would change in terms of how the program operates some day-to-day -day stuff, staff changes. You got to figure those are very much on the table. And, and I've been told by a well-connected source that John Calipari uh, does not expect to be fired. Now, we wait to see what emerges from that meeting. And these are two men that unfortunately have just have, don't have a cozy relationship whatsoever, Barnhart and Calipari. And uh, though I don't expect this to be the case since they don't have a great relationship, you know, a high stakes job, I guess there's the possibility that the meeting doesn't go over incredibly well and we wait and see from that but my my read on the situation i'll be clear about this hassle my read on the situation that john calipari does not expect to be fired and mitch barnhart does not want to fire john calipari and then be tasked with replacing him that opens a whole other issue in terms of who you would actually bring on to kentucky and he has a huge buyout there's a lot there you'd rely on donor money to do it and even that's a sticking point behind the scenes so I anticipate John Calipari will keep his job and we will have some sort of update from the program about significant changes in the infrastructure of Kentucky men's basketball moving forward. But uh, but I will repeat what I said last week and wrote last week. There is a portion of this fan base that is done. Like they are out on John Calipari. They will not be happy whatsoever if and when it is officially recognized that he is keeping the job if it is there. And so that's gonna always be in the air in Lexington. And to me now, this feels like a situation that will end eventually. It's just a matter of, are we waiting another year, another two years? I think his best days have passed him in Lexington. All right, well, let's, uh, let's check in on the coaching carousel right now. I'm not sure Coach Cal will be a part of it, but it's time for Easy Choice, presented by GEICO. Seven power conference teams have already hired new head coaches. Give us your three best fits so far. Yeah, we, uh, bingo, Hassel. We have seven of the ten that uh, that have filled. Three are still left uh, looking for guys right now. I like Dusty May at Michigan. I feel like that's a really good fit, but I will acknowledge, because uh, there's been some kind of talk around college basketball, like Dusty May did an amazing job at FAU. He did. But his team this past season did fall short of expectations, and he was just a play away a year ago in a game against Memphis from not even making it into the second round. Sometimes the breaks that, that you are afforded can really change your life. Dusty May's evidence of that. But the way that he is wired and with that Michigan job, I know he's extremely excited to have that job. He has his press conference here on Tuesday afternoon. He's, I think he's a good fit. I think Kyle Smith at Stanford is a tremendous fit. I think that's my favorite fit of the entire cycle so far. Stanford's a tough job going to the ACC, but it fits him to a T. And then uh, the third one in line there, Darren DeVries at West Virginia. You know, he was just six years at Drake, made three tournaments, 20 plus wins every single season. He was West Virginia's top target for a week plus, uh, heading, you know, heading into that vacancy, finally getting filled there. So. Uh, of all the ones that have been fit, I just, you know, he asked for three, I give you three. May to Michigan, DeVries to West Virginia, Kyle Smith to Stanford tops my list. And as you mentioned, three major power conference openings remain. Look, you got what's going on with Coach Cal at Kentucky and then across the state over in Louisville. I mean, they've had the worst two-year run that that program has ever seen by far. They're moving on, but they haven't found their man yet. What's the latest on Louisville? Yeah, Louisville is still in the midst of a coaching search. Uh, it's gone from would it target and get Scott True? No. Would it get Dusty May? No. It has looked at uh, the likes of Seton Hall, Shaheen Holloway. I don't think that's on the table anymore. Amir Abdul-Rahim from South Florida, Pat Kelsey from Charleston. There's some Josh shirts buzzing around. 
the latest name floating around Louisville is Richard Richard Patino. I'm told I haven't seen this yet, but was talking to someone on the ground in Louisville on Tuesday. Apparently a bed sheet reading Come Home Richard was hung across from the Yum Center. So they are still on the hunt. I don't expect this job to close on Tuesday. Maybe potentially Wednesday there's a chance that we could uh, finally have it closed, but it's a high profile job. Got a case as a top 10 job in the sport, but uh, but the interesting twist to this is it looks unlikely that Louisville will actually pluck a sitting head coach in a power conference to take its vacancy. And I don't think anyone would have thought that was going to be the case if we went back even six weeks ago when Kenny Payne's uh, firing was inevitable. Uh, Richard Pitino would be interesting. Of course, it was uh, a little over 10 years ago, I think 11 years ago now, that his dad, Rick, won the uh, championship that they had to vacate. Moving on to uh, a Big 12 team and, and Oklahoma State, they, they moved on from uh, Mike Boynton after just one tournament appearance in seven seasons. What's going on in Stillwater? Well, I've been talking to a few sources. Oklahoma State has interviewed uh, close to, if not more than 15 candidates here on Tuesday. Oklahoma State continued with its interview process. A number of its targets that it was trying to bring in uh, have passed or taken other jobs. And with that, it's just trying to narrow down which candidate it will be. This just happens to ha happen every cycle. You're going to have a power conference gig that comes open that falls way down the pecking order. Uh, doesn't mean that won't get, they won't get a good coach. Oklahoma State could very well end up with the right guy. Uh, there are many cases over the years of this happening. Uh, UCLA had Mick Cronin like eighth on its list, and I know UCLA is coming off a bad season, but that worked out okay. Now, Oklahoma State is obviously not UCLA. It's not the UCLA job, but it is in the Big 12, and it is trying to, uh, to rally itself and put itself in a good position moving forward after not having an NIL situation. And now, of course, as you know, Hassel, the Big 12 is going to inflate to 16 teams. Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, Utah are coming in later this year. Um, I don't expect Oklahoma State to close on Tuesday. Uh, not impossible, but I don't expect it. I think like Louisville, we could get action there on Wednesday. And speaking of realignment, this next job was not a power conference job, but it will be next season. SMU moving to the ACC. They fired a coach that won 20 games this season. What are they looking for? Yeah, SMU was lambasted for firing Rob Lanier after uh, he doubled the win total, made the NIT, and then after two seasons, he got shipped out there. Um, my read on this is that they are trying to bring in a sitting head coach in a power conference. It has been reported. I can confirm this because this has been a, a buzzy name over the past like 48 hours. Will Andy Enfield leave USC to take the SMU job? I'm told there will be no movement on this on Tuesday. As always with these searches, sometimes things can accelerate. Frankly, because Andy Enfield's name has now been publicly uh, attached to it with SMU putting him as a uh, as a primary target, uh, maybe it moves the process quicker. Or this sometimes happens, Hassel. Like there's a coaching candidate behind the scenes, there's movement, and then the name gets out publicly, and then everyone scurries, and, and they move on to a different one. But, uh, but SMU's a weird job. It's in the middle of Texas. It's in the ACC now. And it's been a great recruiting ground. I'm told that the, the boosters there are, are willing to go north of $4.5 million per year for its next head coach. And they're trying to land a sitting head coach. Uh, whether it's Enfield or someone else, we wait and see. But that one uh, might be at least 24 hours away as well. So we might have a quick... I'm probably jinxing it right now, but we may, may have a lull here on Tuesday without a head coaching hire at the power conference level. And if Enfield did go, if he did, I'm not, I don't know if he will or not. That would trigger another domino because then USC would open mm -hmm. and onward we go. If anybody could use a lull right now, it's it's probably you. You're at least getting a lull from the Island College Basketball Podcast today? Uh, that That is the plan, but I never assume so. And uh, <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that. Hey, listen, it's March. We don't yeah. we don't stop and we'll have plenty more episodes. We're going to have something on Wednesday. Hassel, we're going to have recaps just as we've been doing Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. After every round, every day of the tournament, Eye on College Basketball, me and Gary Parrish, we're bringing in Kyle Boone, David Cobb, Chip Patterson yes. is going to join me on the Friday show, so we'll have you absolutely loaded. Be sure to subscribe. All right, Matt. Thanks, man.